digital. It is the future. It has changed the game. Your customer is now in control. They demand seamless, frictionless experiences and nothing less. This is a time of unprecedented possibility. A time to turn obstacles into opportunities and bold vision into reality. The path forward is simple. It starts by trading complexity for simplicity in how we work, connect, and communicate. So every customer touch point becomes a selling point. And groups of individuals transform into smarter, faster teams. As we connect people, assets, and data through the Internet of Things, we can create ease and intuition. And when we do, whole new business models are suddenly possible. This is your moment to be epic. This is your moment to make the possible real. Art of the Possible. Buongiorno. Unfortunately, there it ends. It's going to be in English, while I'm, I'm very, very excited to be here in Italy. Italy is a country of lifestyle, the country of positive emotions, and the country of innovations. There's a good reason, and Bill mentioned it yesterday, that we named our Internet of Things, our innovation portfolio at SAP, after your innovator, Leonardo da Vinci. And you know, the good thing in this country, it can not, never happen what happened at home in my house. I have kids, eight and 10 year olds, when I said, oh, now we have a brand, SAP Leonardo, they said, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> <laughs> so, but here everybody knows immediately we talk about Leonardo da Vinci. Why? It's, he was multidiscipline. He started from painting, sculpting, math, Science, IoT is nothing different. Often people describe it as a silo, but it starts with big data. You get it sometimes from variables. It comes and the big data needs to be analyzed. You apply artificial intelligence, you apply machine learning, and then you connect it, and there is a value lies. So you connect it to your business process. You change the way you deliver a product, you produce a product and you might provide it in an augmented virtual reality. So all the different technology advancements coming together in IoT. Besides that he was obviously an innovator ahead of his time. And if you have looked closely at the slides, he kind of was drawing the body and you could even go so far that he created the first digital twin of us. And with that, helped everybody to better understand how the body acts. And the digital twin is a very important element of Internet of Things. I don't see him now, but somewhere should be Massimo from Gartner. And Gartner predicted that in the next three to five years, billions of physical things will be represented in the virtual world. Just think about Leonardo da Vinci, first one having a digital twin, and now it becomes billions of things. And we, with our innovation portfolio, which you see here at the corner, can provide you analyzing all the data, getting the data, having intelligence already out there at your machine, at your truck, at your device, because a lot of it will also be analyzed there directly decentral intelligence. We go via our cloud platform, open, openness, very important, partner ecosystem. I know there are many partners here. Thank you very much for supporting us. In IoT, no vendor alone will be successful. We would love to work with you even more. 
going via our open platform and then having standard solutions for you, which give you a head start in the industry for oil production, in the asset management, but also transportation, logistics, further to the internet of everything when you think of agribusiness or smart city. This is something I would like to share in a little more detail how it can impact the way you are working. And it starts all here in Italy. And I, I have seen Danilo before. What do I think are the main success criteria? And he can correct me afterwards, obviously. One of them, and, and he's laughing, so I see him at least. Um, so one, one of the main success criteria, it was not only about cost saving. It was a lot about passenger, customer, consumer experience. It's a journey to ride on this high-speed train. And this high-speed train is a living train. Every second, you get additional new data. And with that data, you can change the way you are doing maintenance. You can analyze how the train behaves. You can go from a planned maintenance to a predictive, to a dynamic maintenance mode. And it's not that you analyze the train as a whole, you go into different elements, if it's a battery and so on, if it's a doors, and then analyze them individually and come up with a new dynamic maintenance system. And this brings, only in the case of Train Italia, hopefully we agree on this still, eight to 10% of savings. And I think this is a lot of money, but please don't forget the second reason, and maybe the more important one is customer experience. We as passenger want the train to be always be on time, Wi-Fi always on, we want to have this experience. And it goes even beyond maintenance when you talk about prediction, predictive capabilities. I think we also talk about forecasting of demand, forecasting of how does the market evolve. It has impact on your supply chain planning you get the data from the things, you get the market demand, you know your supply, coming back to artificial intelligence and machine learning, you apply it directly where the data is. Our objective with artificial intelligence and machine learning is not having a generic engine somewhere else and replicate the data out and back. Our philosophy is have the intelligence where the data is gain speed. We talked about dynamic maintenance management of Trenitalia. This is something where we have the algorithms exactly at the data. Supply chain planning, demand, forecast, information. You can reach a high level of automation with applying artificial intelligence here. And I think when you, it also goes even further but what we are expecting as consumer, as customer, we want to have personalized products and we want to have them tomorrow. And I think when I look here at some colleagues in the first row, you also have running shoes. It looks like you are maybe even running and you want to have personalized running shoes. And we are working with Adidas and others to create it. But design is one thing, customer demand another one but you need to be ready from a production perspective. You need to apply industry 4.0 in your sites. Think of paperless production. Think of the automatic, autonomous vehicles going around, having either the product or the supply on top of it. We have here two examples, and it's not like they cleaned their production sites that we could take a photo. It was during normal business. And with Jaguar Land Rover, they achieved a really a high level of automation with applying our industry for all solution in manufacturing. And, and it's all, it's a concert of the machines and the humans working together. You have to make sure that it's always aligned, that it's always flexible, adaptive. There is a breakdown of a machine and then the product goes somewhere else. This is when we talk about autonomous production. This is when we talk about a lot of the decisions 
are happening decentrally. And it's also, when you look at the second example was Harley Davidson, where we have achieved together with them, with a bigger change management upskilling project. It's never only the software, it's never only the new equipment, it is rethinking your processes, it is upskilling your people, it's change management. But there, we were able to change it from a standard production line to an individualized production line. 1,300 variants in one factory. And it's continuously improving. We are measuring every second humidity, temperature, and we continuously improve the process. Obviously not the step change, what we have here with 2,700% throughput, going from a lead time from 21 days to six hours, but continuously always improving and making sure that we are state of the art. And Industry 4.0 is something a lot of companies want to achieve. But when you talk to them, they sometimes whisper, oh, I think I'm more on an Industry 2.0 level. How can you, SAP, coming from Germany, coming from the country where Industry 4.0 was born, how could you help us? Do you have best practices? Do you have a road to Industry 4.0? And our offer here, and I know Louisa is, we are together here, right? Yeah. We want to help you there. We have packages also out there, which jumpstart, accelerator, with best practices. We want to show you the way to come to a paperless, highly automated production line as far as you want to go. It's also up to you how much human intervention you want to have in the future. How much you want to use is that IoT enables your emergency situation management. Everything else can be automated. And also keep in mind when we talk about intelligence, when we talk about IoT, any time you add a new data point, the system is learning. The whole system is a learning cycle. And it's, of course, something you might say, it's good to have a high level of automation and the machines can do whatever they want, but some control might be not a bad thing. And what we have here is, some of you have seen our boardroom of the future with the financial KPIs and also information and simulations. We got a lot of requests from companies to have such a boardroom of the future also for the manufacturing, for one plant, for several plants, where you can compare KPIs, where you can steer your production without interfering with each and every machine-to-machine -machine communication. And I think that's what we can provide you as well, so that you have this transparency, this visibility, this direct orchestration and orchestration in a way that you have all the data. And we are also working on in having some gamification aspects in. You might now think, oh, my production, I fully bet on it. How can SAP talk about gamification? But there is a generation out there, which is maybe not us here in the room, potentially. Some of you exceptions. The millennials, our kids, our sons, our daughters who will work in the factories of the future, who will think of what is the optimized way of doing a production, how can I simulate the best way of orchestrating this autonomous vehicles, what we have here, the machines and the people. And this is something we can provide you with a boardroom of the future for manufacturing and where we can help you. And it does not end in the four walls of a factory. The beauty of Internet of Things is that you have data which were there 20 years already and no one could use it. And this data you can share, not everything, but maybe the milestones, maybe how, if the good arrived or not, some things you can share. And you can share it along the value chain. Think about, you know your product is on a ship on the ocean and you know that it is not in the best condition. Maybe there were weather or it's on a truck and there was not an accident, but it had, had to break and it was shaking. 
and the cooler um, is, was damaged. And now the temperature goes up. And you know it before it arrives. And you can again apply intelligence. What is the best alternative? How can you best supply other inventory, other warehouse, or repair the cooler? So this is not a scenario of the future. We can do this with your cool chain today. And it is also going, when you think of global track and trace, logistic business networks, it's going away from a chain. It's not sequential anymore. We talk about networks. And I know Bill mentioned yesterday also the topic of blockchain. Blockchain will not save world hunger, but they are very good, very good scenarios in IoT and supply chain where it's helpful. Global track and trace. Smart contracts, that's where we will apply the blockchain and already have the first co-innovation with customer. Very important to also allow this decentralized processing in a network environment, in a logistic business network where you have a multi-tier visibility of where your good and your product is. Assuming you will share at least some of your data and the other players in the network as well that you can immediately, instantly react to changes. And with that, I would like to also come to my closing. What we want to provide you, an intelligent way to use the data we have now from the things, from the devices, from the trucks, from the ship, whatever assets you have from the trains, and bring it in your business process, because there is a value really is happening. Change your business process in a new way. Reshape the way you're doing business. Make us as employees, as humans, more intelligent. Augment our intelligence. Not only artificial intelligence, also human intelligence gets augmented. And we want to do this together with you. And there's actually no better country to be successful than the country where Leonardo da Vinci came from and where we got inspired for innovation portfolio in Italy here with you. Thank you very much.